assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so children we were doing the word problems in exercise 10.3 so there are a few more uh, uh, word problems a different kind of problems so i'll just uh, be doing those okay so come to this question number 8 in exercise 10.3 so here it's again a speed problem but it's a different kind of a uh, distance speed uh, distance time speed problem okay so you should know the formula distance is equals to speed into time so these three main formulas you should know so let me just write down those formulas here okay right just on the top okay so distance is equals to speed into time speed is equals to distance by time and time is equals to distance by speed yeah so now come to this question it says a train travels 360 kilometers so when you say 360 kilometers it is kilometer is the unit for a uh, distance so 360 is your distance so you write down d is equals to 360 first okay at uniform speed uniform speed in the sense it's not traveling with the different speed okay it's maintaining its speed it's traveling with the same speed okay for 360 kilometers it's not changed the speed at all the train is going with the same speed now if the speed had been 5 kilometers per hour more so whatever the speed was if i increase the speed by 5 kilometers per hour what will happen see if you go with a faster uh, speed you are going to reach the destination faster right the time taken will be less isn't it so that's what they're saying if you travel with the if the speed had been 5 kilometers per hour more it would take it would have taken 1 hour less for the same journey obviously because you know if you increase the speed the time is going to be taken less right so find the speed of the train there a train they are asking so we will say let the speed of the train be x kilometers per hour okay that's our next second sentence then we will see we know that time is equals to distance by speed this is the formula so distance is 360 and uh, speed is x so you just write time is equals to 360 by x see there is no other thing you have to you, you should not ask me like you know how do i start with how do i uh, write that you know t i have to use this formula only why do you why how how can i tell that you know i have to use t is equals to d by s you have given me three formulas why should i use this formula right see they have given you distance and we have assumed x to be the speed so we have though we have assumed x to be the speed we know that there is a speed some speed x okay so distance and speed are given so time is uh, what you need to find out okay that's how you will proceed okay so time is what is not known so you will write down t equals to d by s and you will write down so d is 360 and x speed is x so you, this is the time actually time now they are saying if the speed was increased by 5 so your speed is x plus 5 then what will be the time the time would have been 360 by x plus 5 right because that's the distance and the time is x plus 5 but the question says that if i increase the speed by 5 my time is actually 1 hour less than the actual time so the time which i had got now this time 360 by x plus 5 is actually 1 Mine one less than the actual time. So the actual time was three sixty by x, right? So from this time, it was one less. Okay. So I will write three sixty by x minus one. Now, let me move the one to the other, this side because you know it's negative one. So I move the one to this side, and I move this three sixty by x plus five to the other side. So that becomes minus three sixty by x plus five. Okay. Now I'll have to make the denominator same again. So you multiply x plus five with this, and you multiply x with this. and the denominator turns out to be x times x plus 5 which is x square plus 15x so on top you have got 360x plus 360 into 5 is a uh, 1800 minus 360x so now this 360x gets cancelled and you get only 1800 on top now the bottom thing you can move it to the other side you get x square plus 5x right is equals to 1800 so now you move the 1800 to the side so you get minus 1800 right so this is the equation you have got now you can use either the factoring method or you can use the quadratic formula whichever is easy for you okay so i've just used quadratic formula a is 1 b is 5 c is this thing i've written as it is and then this is my formula and i substitute the necessary details so now when i do this i get minus 5 plus or minus square root of 25 plus 25 plus uh, 7200 right so that's going to give you square root of 7000 
225 okay now now at the bottom now the thing is you need to get uh, the square root of 7225 so till here up to here everybody will i hope everyone has understood and you know how to do it now i'm going to uh, show you how to find out the square root of 7225 right so for this you can I use the uh, formula that is you know not the formula actually you see 7 7225 um, lies between see you know that 10 square is 100 right so this 7000 lies definitely greater than 100 right so now you go to 20 square 20 square is 400 so it's greater than 400 also 30 square is 900 right so it's greater than 900 then you get 4 40 square is uh, 60, 1600 so like that if you keep on going you see you get 80 square as 6400 and 90 square is 8100 right so the 72025 lies between these two correct right so this is the case so now you need to find out so it has to be between 81 82 83 to 89 and the last number is 5 so you can ch check with 85 so you check 85 times 85 you will definitely get 7225 okay so that's how you could uh, get this okay there are many ways many methods you can follow uh, so you find out this uh, square root of 7225 i have got 85 now i will split it into two parts okay one is minus 5 plus 85 by 2 the other one is uh, minus 5 minus 85 by 2 so when i do this this one i get positive 80 by 2 which is 40 kilometers per hour here i am getting a negative answer so negative answer is neglected as you know speed can't be negative so the speed of the train is 40 kilometers per hour okay so that's how you will do this now we come to this ninth question ninth question is also a different uh, kind of a problem okay these are called as work done problems okay or a job done problem so you should uh, not approach this problem like how we have done all the uh, usual problems you know like when they say uh, some you just add right when they say this and this you just add it right so the same thing you're not going to do in this case so it's a different way of looking at this problem so let's i'll just tell you how to uh, approach this problem so now here they say two water taps together can fill a tank in nine three by eight hours right so here it's they, it's saying that two water taps are filling the tank so they are working right the water taps are there is some kind of a work being done so and the work over here is filling the tank okay now the tap of a larger diameter takes 10 hours less than the smaller one to fill the tank separately so the larger one obviously it will uh, give more water right so it will take lesser time to fill the tank so if i individually i use only uh, one, one tap at a time so the tap which is having a larger di diameter the bigger tap is filling the tank quickly right uh, faster so how many hours lesser uh, within 10 hours uh, quicker that is okay than the smaller one now find the time in which each tap can separately fill the tank so we will say let the time taken by the smaller tap be x and let the time taken by the larger tap will be obviously x minus 10 because they have said that you know it is supposed to be x minus 10 i mean you know 10 hours less so x minus 10 over here okay now if i say time taken by both taps together you're not supposed to add both of them okay because it's not just you know something like you, you it, it's it's uh, it's work done okay whenever you have work done you will not add the uh, time as it is you will say you will add the reciprocal okay so here the time taken by both of them is given as 9 3 by 8 hours which could be simplified as, as you know 8 times 9 is 72 72 plus 3 is 75 by 8 okay but then when you are adding them up together you will add 1 over x and 1 over x minus 10 okay it's that is the time taken in uh, like you know the work done in one hour okay understood this is the work done in one hour like how much water was filled by the tank uh, filled in the tank in one hour that is 1 over x for the uh, smaller tap 1 over x minus 10 for the larger tap okay uh, so that is equals to 1 over 75 by 8 you will write okay so now you will make the denominators common again so that's going to be you multiply x minus 10 here and x here so that's going to be x minus 10 plus x divided by x into x minus 10 so this also gets reciprocated you get 8 over 75 the 8 right uh, and then you get you just have to solve this 
x plus x is 2x minus 10 divided by x square minus 10x is equal to 8 by 75. Now you just have to cross multiply both of them. So that's going to be 8x square minus 10x is equals to 75 x to x minus 10. Okay. So now this you just have to simplify this 8x square minus 80x is equals to 150x minus 750. So you bring all of them together combine the like terms. So this is what you are getting finally. So this 750 times so you can use a quadratic formula or factoring. So I have used a factoring. So multiply 750 and 8 first. So that gives you 6000. So now this 6000 has to be split into two parts. So 200 times 30 on 200 minus 30 gives you I mean plus 30 gives you 230 right. Mm, so here you should have a minus actually this is supposed to be a minus because you are supposed to get a 230 minus 30 only then a minus 230 minus 200 minus 30 gives you uh, minus uh, 230 right so yeah now you can say that this is uh, uh, minus again this is supposed to be minus wait a minute yeah it's supposed to be minus right okay so now here, here you see so now this is correct okay so now you get 8x so you take the common factor so these are things already you, you already know the only thing is you have to uh, deal with bigger numbers here that's it okay so 8x plus 30 okay this is again not plus 30 it's minus 30 and uh, x minus 25 okay and then x was actually the time in which each step can separately fill the tank okay all right here, here you can just you know raise this and you can write it as 8x minus 30 right so you just quickly go over this you're getting 8x square minus 230x plus 750 so that's going to give you minus 230 here one minute i just put a minus over here here this is also minus again right so you get a positive here okay so yeah that's positive this is positive and you don't have to neglect it now because it's positive right 30 over 8 so uh, you can just you know cross check this so again you know you can just cross check this this is not neglected actually here okay right this is not required Okay, so the, the time taken by the smaller tank could be taken as 25 minutes. I mean, you know, this is the more, more whole number and the time taken by the larger tank will be 25 minus 10, which is 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so we have to neglect this x is equals to 30 by 8. Actually, positive 30 by 8 is possible, right? Is it because it, it's time, right? So time could be rational number. So, but then here what happens is they are saying that uh, one of the taps, see this x was actually our larger tap, right? See what have we assumed on top? We have taken that, uh, that the time taken by the uh, larger tap, uh, sorry, smaller tap be x and the larger tap is x minus 10, right? So now here if you assume that x, uh, the smaller tap has got 30 by 8 as the time, so that is perfect. But then if I want to subtract 30 by uh, 30 by 8 minus 10 because I need to find out the larger tap's time, right? So in this case what happens? I get 30 minus 80 by 8, right? I will make the denominators common. So I get minus 50 by 8. So one of the tap's time turns out to be negative if I use this 30 by 8. So that is why we neglect this, okay? And uh, then 25 is the only answer we will choose, right? Okay. Alright then children, so uh, see you in the next video. Allah Hafiz, thank you.